Greetings from the End Time Apostolic Christian Holiness Church, located at 650 South Warren Avenue in Columbus, Ohio, where Jesus is Lord and our pastor is Bishop Dr. Derek A. Reeves. Due to COVID-19 restrictions, our order of services have changed and are as follows. Sunday School at 9 a.m. Sunday Morning Worship at 11 a.m. Our weekday services, Tuesday, Bible study at 6 p.m. Wednesday, prayer at 7 p.m. Our services will be available via Zoom and Facebook Live. Let us join in as the Word of God comes forth that is able to heal, save, and deliver. The Lord say the same I want to teach today. Last week, the Lord blessed and moved upon us and moving us to specific levels of, of victory and breakthrough. And so with the Lord's help, I want to teach this morning and prayerfully this information will be a benefit to you because we want to talk about kingdom victory as an overcomer. We want to talk about not just kingdom victory as an overcomer, but talk about the three major components and aspects that the Bible makes us familiar with that we will war with and give you some scriptural perspectives as what it is that we need to do to remain in that state of victory. First John chapter five, verses one through five, and the word of God is penned on this wise. And we do have junior church today. And so uh, if they are prepared and ready, they can uh, dismiss and go to that area at this time. First John chapter five, verses one through five. Can we thank God for the praise team and our music ministry? Amen. For leading us to the throne of grace. Amen. The word of God is penned on this wise. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begot loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. And right after that, he goes on to say, For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? Who is this then? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God of God. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy word. So again, we do welcome you to end time where our vision is preparing believers to operate in kingdom principles. We want to reach souls, to develop souls, to ensure that souls are empowered to function in their purpose in the kingdom. We thank God for our senior pastor, Bishop Reeves, First Lady Reeves, and all the saints of God at large. And as such, we want to talk about kingdom victory as an overcomer. Verse 5 says, Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? And verse 4 says, For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Brothers and sisters, it is interesting to note when we look at the Word of God and we look at this epistle, 1 John. Remember, John is considered to be uh, the apostle whom some would say, and as the scripture says, that Jesus loved. Uh, he, he's one that Jesus preferred. We speak of love. Love is an attachment. It's a special type of affection that you may have for someone and you begin to have a specific preference to be connected. Love uh, in its totality refers to an aspect of a choice. It's a choice that we are making to be linked, to be connected, and as a result of this choice, to be linked and to connect it, no matter what may transpire, but I'm choosing to be connected to this particular person and to display a specific relationship 
that goes beyond just a familial type of relation. There is communion that takes place. There's an aspect of fellowship that takes place. There's an aspect of companionship that takes place. And, and so the Bible says that John, being the apostle whom Jesus loved, he, he wrote this epistle, the first uh, the epistle of First John. Uh, he's also the one that wrote uh, the the Gospel of John. He wrote the Epistles of John, and he's the one that God breathed upon to bring forth the book of Revelation. And and some would say that when you look at the Gospel of John, that it speaks of the past in terms of salvation, because it talks about how Jesus came to die, and how he not only came to die, but he came to reconcile man back unto himself. The uh, book of John, the gospel of John, was so paramount because it began to reveal uh, the Lord in a specific perspective that showed him as one that was full of glory and it talked about his origin, if you will, or his state of being, if you will, prior to the incarnation, prior to him coming in the flesh. The Bible uh, goes forward or it, it spot, talks more in the book of St. John. It talks more uh, further in the past, if you will, than the book of Genesis does because the book of Genesis says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But the book of John, as it relates to talking about our Lord and Savior and who he is and, and who it is that we are connected to, says in the beginning, was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, indicating that God, it was him in the beginning and it was this living mind and, and he was full of life and power and it was by him through this uh, mechanism that God created all of existence. And, and so the book of John talks about the past, it talks about the salvation and when we look at the letters of John, when we look at the epistles of John, we begin to see the Lord uh, revealing Himself and and showing about our present, our sanctification. Yes, He saved us in the past, but we have to live in the present. We have to live in the now. And as we live in the now, how do I live this life of being sanctified? Now, brothers and sisters, if if I could just take my time here, I want us to understand that uh, we must realize the special relationship that takes place when we were born again of the water and of the spirit. You see, in the Old Testament, it talked about how people had to be sanctified or cleansed or purged so that they could come and be in contact with and holy God. You see, God is holy. The Bible says he is holy, therefore we must be holy. But when we speak of holiness, holiness sometimes can have this mystical application where it's ambiguous. And so when you speak of holy, yes, it speaks of pure and, and clean and free from dirt and, 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 and completely sanctified. And But holiness is a state. It means that it is removed and dedicated and pure from anything else. And so when we speak of God being holy, it refers to how he is distinct and he is separate from everything else. He He's separate from anything created. He's separate from anything created, created, whether spiritual or natural. He's a being that cannot be compared to anything, if you will. He is above and beyond all space and time. He's above and beyond all created spiritual and natural realities. He goes beyond all dimensions, and, and that's why uh, no created thing can ever really perceive everything that God is because you can only perceive the things in the dimensions by which you were created to operate and because God is outside of space and time he's outside of all dimensions because he created all dimensions everything created whether spiritual beings pneumatics as our bishop would call them or natural beings 
They're only created to operate and perceive in the dimension that they were created in. So we can't even fully really perceive God in his totality. The Bible says that Jesus at one point said that you talk about worshiping God and knowing him, but you have neither seen his form nor seen his shape. Glory be to God. You can't really comprehend who he fully is is but only way you can is with him in you bringing him through you and revealing himself to you in a greater revelation and and so it was this god he's holy he's sanctified he's dedicated and and so in order to approach him properly the bible says that we have to be in a specific position and place to be able to connect to him why because uh, with him not only being holy but because the scripture says he dwells in the light that no man can approach in other words because of his magnificence and because of how glorious he is anything that is of death and destruction and darkness when it comes into his presence it will immediately be destroyed that's why he has to clothe himself he has to cover himself Himself. He has to shield himself so that he can interact with all of creation. If you can just take a mental picture, if you will, it, it, it would be as if we would go uh, face first into a sun. Our bodies are not created to handle that much energy, that much radiation that much power and if we go directly into the sun we would immediately be destroyed some of us are already being destroyed just with the sun rays that are coming and breaking through the ozone layer right now we get sunburn and we get burnt up on our skin and we get lesions and all these different things I think they say it takes about eight minutes for the light from the sun to reach the earth so we're dealing with an eight minute time frame from light that comes from sun to the earth and even with all the shielding factors we have with the ozone layer the clouds and all these different things we still are impacted by the sunlight and rays and and so it is like that with God but to a more omniac perspective to a more grandiose perspective and so God is holy he's sanctified there's none like him and he says in order to be close to me you have to be in a certain perspective. You have to be a certain way. You have to be holy and sanctified. And, and in the Old Testament, brothers and sisters, the Bible says that they had to use bulls and, and goats. And they had to use blood from animals. And this just brought in atonement or an atonement. And one definition means it was just a covering it it just covered it didn't hallelujah fully pay the price but it just covered so that God would be able to in a righteous manner interact with mankind glory be to God but the Bible says that those who have been born again of the water and of the spirit the reason why Jesus had to come was because he came in the volume of the book he came in a body and he died for you and I he went to the lowest parts of hell and ascended far above all heavens why separating the partition that would separate man from God he now made a way that's why when we oh hallelujah come to the father we come to the father through Jesus because we're coming to the father the source of all things but we come to him through Jesus Christ why because we're saying father you're holy and righteous but now I'm approaching you through the method by which you have made it possible for me to come and stand before you being a holy God I could not do it on my own however because Jesus not only paid the price but because he's glorified because he's all power I I am crucified with Christ uh, nevertheless I live yet is not me but Christ that lives in me and now the life I live in the flesh I'm living by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me so I must come through the authority of Jesus I must come through being baptized in his name I must come being baptized in his spirit because as long as I am buried with 
Christ through baptism into death. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. I am able to come to our Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ, who is our source and who is our way and mechanism that provides the way and ability for me to have an high priest which can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And because he can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, we can approach the throne of grace and acquire mercy to find the grace to help in the time of need. I, I don't approach the throne by my own merit. I'm not approaching the throne by my own righteousness, but I'm coming through the blood and the righteousness that is in Christ Jesus, and I can acquire the grace. I can acquire the mercy. I can find the grace to help me in every time of need. It, it goes beyond just a monetary need. It, it goes beyond just a, hallelujah, a fleshly physical need, but it's a holistic need. He, he's come to give you perfect peace. He, he's come, hallelujah, to give you holistic peace. He, he's come to, to keep your mind. He's come to deliver your soul. He's come to break every chain. He's come to destroy and remove the very things that kept you bound. He, he's come to destroy curses. He, he's come to destroy those genetic defects that came from our father and our natural father, our natural mother. He's come to change and to shift and to change all of that. He's come to give you and I perfect peace uh, if our mind and our heart uh, can continually be stayed upon him. Uh, Father, I bless you and I thank you for the ability to have uh, that perfect peace through you. And, and so, brothers and sisters, we have to take note that this sanctification that God provided, it goes beyond something, it goes beyond the things that are in the Old Testament and what the Old Testament experienced. Mm, hallelujah, help me Holy Ghost. The Bible says that Jesus indicated, he says, Father, I'm praying not for the world, but I'm praying for those that would hear, hallelujah, hear of me through the word that they will preach the glory he says that I had with you glory before I came in the flesh he says I'm praying that you would be in me I and you but he's saying that we in them and they in me that they can experience this same glory that they can be connected to this same glory that they can have this same glory Glory not refers to not just something that is external that you just see. When we think of glory, we just think of light. Uh, that is one aspect of it. But we have to go beyond that and begin to consider why the light is showing. And so when you speak of glory in the Old and New Testament, it refers to the visible representation. One aspect of it is, is the visible representation of of the power, authority, and might of God. How do you know that God has glory? You begin to see the visible representation of his power, his authority, and his might. You may see it through the splendor of light that is showing. That light comes forth because there is someone who has so much energy and power resident within them that when they step on the scene, Oh, glory be to God. When they immerse themselves in this natural realm, hallelujah, when it goes from the immaterial and begin to push forth in this material realm, there's so much power and so much, oh, glory be to God, so much energy that it excites every atom. It excites the very molecular structure and it excites it to such a degree that it moves to such a state that it begins to 
release the energy of light. It cannot stay there. So, so the glory of God is where God is manifesting himself. And when he manifests himself, he begins to interact with this material realm. And as he interacts with this material realm, he not only shakes it, but he also begins to release his very power, his glory, his effulgence. And when he releases it, the very conditions and situations that are contrary to who he is everything that is contrary to what his life is because he is so powerful when he reveals himself when he unfolds himself, uh, when he makes himself known uh, in the natural realm, in the soulish realm, in the spiritual realm, uh, he releases his power, his authority, and his might uh, to make straight uh, whatever is contrary to that. Uh, now, the Bible uh, gives us a diffusion of his power. It's like uh, a, a kaleidoscope, if you will, where you look at light Light and you look through it, you begin to see all the spectrums of light. The Bible gives us multiple types of power and gives us different differentiations of the power spectrum. But from God's perspective, help me Jesus, from God's perspective is not that he has a power just to heal cancer and a power to uh, exercise authority over finances or a power to cause your mind to be correct or a power to open up limbs, a power to open up eyes. No, from God's perspective because he created all existence when his presence is introduced, hallelujah, to whatever the situation may be, he, because he is who he is, and his life, it, it created all of existence. As soon as he comes into the space, whatever needs to be corrected, it just falls in line. Hallelujah. He is not limited in his scope. He's not limited in his power. The same, um, oh glory, the same power that it causes for God to heal a headache uh, is the same power that can grow back a limb. Glory, hallelujah. The same power that can heal a sniffy cold uh, is the same power, hallelujah, that can open up blinded eyes. The, the same power that can open the door to give you five dollars uh, is the the same power that can open up the door to give you 50 million uh, to a person who is infinite in all of his being uh, he does not view things uh, from a little bit to a lot uh, oh help me Jesus to a being who is limitless in his power and ability. He's not looking as if I have to have a little bit here and I wane off here, but in his mind and his perspective, he says, no matter what I introduce my power into the situation, I'm here to bring about complete and full deliverance. Oh, hallelujah. Help me, Jesus. Come on, King. You got to keep going. And so... Brothers and sisters, what we see then is the Bible says that the glory that was in Jesus, he says, I have now given it to them. If you can just walk with me, listen to the pertinence of this and please understand the gravity of that statement. In the Old Testament, they only had a certain level of sanctification. But the Bible says that God has done a new thing through Jesus Christ. Mm, hallelujah. He says, behold, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. He is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have now become new glory. He says, I brought them to another level of sanctification. When we speak of sanctification, sanctification speaks of the process by which one now becomes pure and one becomes available and 
able to be used in the capacity that they were created for or that they were set apart for. Let me say that again. Sanctification is the process that one undergoes that allows them to be clean and washed and in right standing so that they can be used in the capacity that they were set aside or consecrated for. So God consecrates things. He is holy and because he is holy he consecrates things for himself. He separates things and says this is for me. However, there has to be a constant sanctification process because things can become defiled or things can become dirty. So you have to constantly clean that thing off, constantly remove the impurities so that it can be fit for the use by which it was removed and consecrated over for. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a what? living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service now this is the sanctification and be not conformed to what this world but be ye transformed why by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God so Jesus said, now I've brought them, I sanctify them so that they now can be used for your glory, so that they now can be used for the kingdom. But the gravity of that, brothers and sisters, and this is exciting to me. The gravity of that is that this is a further level of sanctification that goes beyond any type of sanctification that creation has ever seen. Oh, hallelujah. The angels were sanctified to serve in a specific capacity, but they were not considered the sons of God as we are considered the sons of God. In the Old Testament, they were sanctified, but they had to bring bulls and goats, and there were priests that had to be the intermediaries to go between, and there was a lavish process, but that still just covered over. But Jesus said, hallelujah, I am making them one with me. Father, you in me, we in them, and they in us. Oh, hallelujah. Us in the hand, in the midst of the Father. Us in the hand and in the midst of God. Us in the hand and in the midst of his glory. Those who have received this spirit, you now have been sanctified to a greater level of glory. This glory now that you and I have far surpasses the glory that anything else has ever witnessed in this world. Oh, glory be to God. Behold, what, oh, what manner of love is this? That God would lay down his life for us. That he would call us the children of God. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. What perspective and, and what is this that we now now can be called those who have been filled with the spirit have his life and whereas before man could not command demonic presence man did not have the full authority to war against the, the devil because uh, Adam abdicated his authority over Satan. But the Bible says, who is this? Oh, hallelujah. Who is this that ascended? But he that descended first and to the lower parts of the earth. The same that descended is the same that ascended far above all heavens that he might feel all things. He set above all principality, all power, all dominion in every name that is named. For God hath highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every name, an authority that's above of every authority that at the sound of the name of Jesus every knee shall bow every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father and this glory
glory and the authority that's in Christ Jesus. He's placed it in you, the believer, the body of Christ. The kingdom victory has an overcomer. Give God some praise in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, brothers and sisters, the Bible indicates that he's placed us with him to a greater level of glory, a greater level of sanctification. I sanctify them through my word. I've sanctified them or made them clean through my word. See, remember, sanctification is a process of cleaning so that you now can move and be used in the capacity by which you were consecrated over to be used by. And God says this level of sanctification Hallelujah, because you're going to be a child of God, because my spirit is going to dwell in you, because you're going to be part of me, because you're going to be seated with me in heavenly places. I'm going to pull you to a greater level of sanctification, a greater level of purity. That's why, brothers and sisters, the book of Hebrews says the word of God is quick. Talking about the logos, that term for word is logos and dealing with the very mind of God and his thoughts, his precepts, Jesus himself. Uh, the word of God is quick and is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. So the Lord living in us divides asunder soul and spirit it reaches to the moral and moral and joints and it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart the further level of sanctification that's why we have to remain in his presence that's why we don't neglect praying and staying before him that's why we don't neglect asking him to fill us with his purpose fill us with his mind fill us with his heart because we are renewed Renewed day by day, the more I stay before him, the more I lay before him and allow his mind and his heart to flow through my mind and my heart. The more I allow him to flow through me, he pushes out arrogance. Hallelujah. He begins to filter out the haughty look. He begins to filter out the high-mindedness. He begins to filter out our own desires and wills. He begins to push out uh, our fleshly mind wanting to do our thing. The more I stay in his presence, I'm transformed more and more into the image of Christ Jesus and transformed more and more into his glory. The more I allow his light to reflect off of me, the light shines on me, shows me where I am faulty. The light shines on me and begins to show me where I'm not matching up. The light shines on me and shows me where I'm faulty, shows me where I'm faulty in my faith, shows me where I'm arrogant in my heart, shows me why I want to do things my own way, shows me why I'm holding on to my own thought process, shows me why I'm allowing fighting and contention, shows me why I'm trying to hold on, hallelujah, to past hurts and, and past pains and he, glory be to God. And the awesome thing about this God is he not just shows it to us but he provides the power and the remedy through his word so that it can be removed from us so that we can be healed from it so that we can be cleansed from it the more the light shines the more the glory is pressed in me he begins to press out those things that are not like him he presses out those conditions that kept me bound he presses out uh, those infractions that I'm trying to hold on to. You know how it is. We like Oh, glory. Let me let me rephrase. I know how it is. Uh, sometimes I like to lie to myself. Uh, I like to hold on to stuff. Uh, ah, glory. Because I like to have an excuse uh, why to be mad. I, I like to have an excuse uh, why to go off. I like to have an excuse uh, why not to change. I like to have an excuse uh, why to do my own thing. But, but the Bible says uh, that it's through proper love. 
walking in the love of God. This love is an agape love. It is the God kind of love. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. This agape love is a divine love. It's not a love you and I can do on our own. When we look through 1 Corinthians 13, you put your name on it, we cannot do it. Love is patient and love is kind. Love does not try to push itself up. Love endures all. Love does not seek its own evil or seek its own. Love does not see evil in others. Love rejoices in the truth. Love will always uh, hope. Love will always have faith. Glory be to God. be to God. Uh, I, I told y'all this before when I put my name on there I fail every time. Uh, Philip is patient uh, and kind. Philip is long suffering. Oh no Philip's not. Uh, Philip can be short. Uh, hallelujah. Philip can cut folk off real quick. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, Philip sometimes don't want to endure. Uh, uh, love does not vaunt itself up. Love does not try Philip does not try to exalt himself above. Oh glory. It sounds good uh, but let me and sister Tanika get into it. Uh, I'm going to try to put myself up every time mad uh, and upset because I want you to hear what I'm saying. Uh, you're not trying to hear me. You're not trying to do what I'm trying to do. I'm hurt. Uh, I'm in pain and you ain't listening. Uh, uh, when them kids act uh, well, you know, uh, uh, with the R word, I don't want to offend. Uh, but you know, when kids act mentally challenged and you're looking at them and, and you want to choke them glory. Shake them till the liver's loose. Uh, uh, love endures all. Wait, wait. No, 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 no. Phil, sometimes Philip's not. Uh, uh, sometimes Philip comes up. Uh, uh, can I just be transparent? Sometimes Philip comes up uh, uh, from the basement where he's working at uh, and tells the mama and the children, I'm tired of all y'all and all y'all getting on my nerve. Uh, oh Lord, I missed it. Uh, oh, so God said this type of love, 1 Corinthians 13, uh, this is not something you can do on your own uh, but it's the divine kind of love and, and so he says because God is love uh, this type of love is something that God has to move in us and move through us and he has to work in us uh, only thing I'm responsible for is I have to allow him glory be to God to flow through me to exercise this love in me oh hallelujah no matter what it looks like and no matter what it feels like yes it hurts and yes I am upset and yes it does not make sense uh, but I have to hope all things I have to believe all things God I don't feel like I can do it and he says no you can't do it on your own uh, but you need me to flow through you to empower you and help you to move in this kind of love you need me to strengthen you and move you to have this type of agape love you need me to strengthen your mind and heart that when you don't feel like it, when you don't feel like doing what's right, when you feel like giving it all up, when you feel like throwing in the towel, he says you need me to empower you and strengthen you to endure. The beautiful thing about it, brothers and sisters, that if you put your own name on it, oh glory, you will fail every time. When you try to put your own self in that situation, you and I cannot do it on our own. But the beautiful thing about it, as I said earlier, brothers and sisters, that I must remain in Christ. And, and so I have to put Jesus' name on there. Uh, I have to say and look and say, wait a minute. Uh, Jesus uh, is patient. Uh, uh, Jesus is 
is kind. Jesus suffereth long and, and Jesus does not envy glory. Jesus does not push himself up. He, he does not behave himself unseemly. Lord have mercy. Help me Holy Ghost. Uh, Philip can behave himself unseemly at times. I, I'm not displaying the character of Christ all the time. I don't reflect uh, uh, the roses and the petal of roses. Uh, oh glory. I don't reflect uh, hallelujah skipping in the meadows uh, all the time. But Jesus does not behave himself unseemly. Jesus does not seek his own Jesus is not easily provoked. Lord have mercy. Uh, Philip can be easily provoked. Uh, uh, just glory. As they used to say, you don't have to drop the hat. I'll drop it myself uh, just to get into a drag a mount fight. Uh, I'll knock it off. They used to have something when we were younger. Put something on someone's shoulder. You remember that? They say, knock it off. And if they knock it off the shoulder, then they'd be ready to fight. I don't know what that was about. Uh, uh, but sometimes I would put the I would put it on the shoulder and I would knock it off myself. Uh, be ready to fight. Uh, Y'all hear what I'm saying? Jesus is not easily provoked. Uh, oh, but look at what Jesus does. He does not rejoice in iniquity and he does not think evil. Uh, no matter how much evil is all around and no matter how much you're displaying it. Uh, huh, but he does not uh, think evil. Uh, when Jesus looks at us, he sees the finished product. When Jesus looks at you and I, he sees the finished product. He sees us faultless without blemish, spotless before his throne. Now, that's why he continually, continually works with us and works through us because he's saying, I'm not looking at this moment by moment, but you're going through this process of sanctification. I'm, I'm cleaning you and I'm washing you and I'm removing those things from you so that you can be connected to me and be able to be used in the capacity by which I have called you to be used for. There are, uh, there is a purpose and a destiny for each and every one of us. And the yoke that we have is specifically fitted for you. The yoke that he has for me is specifically fitted for me. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Uh, take my burden upon you and learn of, of me. And Jesus, hallelujah, beareth all things, believeth all things, and he hopes all all things and so when we look at it from our perspective no we cannot do it uh, huh? but the Bible says uh, when we look at it from God's perspective look at it from his perspective he is able me through him him working in me and empowering me and strengthening me uh, Lord I know I can't do it on my own but Father, I need your help. Help me to line up to your word. Help me to say yes. Help me to acquiesce to your will so that you can be used through me and every facet of my being. Lord, just as the song says, just help me to say yes. The times I don't want to say yes. The times I don't want to do it. Lord, help me to say yes. Hallelujah. And so, brothers and sisters, the Bible indicates and states uh, uh, that John now being the one whom Jesus loved, and he begins to talk about the love and the structure of love and the importance of love. And he talks about in this particular epistle, he says, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And Everyone that loveth him, that begot, loveth him also, that has begotten of him. And in other words, he's saying that there is now a love. Love is the supreme ethic, if you will. Love is the currency, hallelujah, of the kingdom of God. And when we speak of currency, remember currency is what is used to give as a means of exchange so that you then can receive something within a system. So you, you agree that this is the means of exchange and I'm using this so that I then can purchase or receive something from the system. And so love, God is love and love is the currency 
of the kingdom of God, if we don't function in love, if we are not connected in love, if we don't function in that affection, in that devotion where he is moving through us and him empowering us, then it becomes impossible to fully receive everything that he has ordained for us. There's one scripture that even talks about and says that it's faith that worketh through love. And so even faith, hallelujah, that we have and our faith in him works through the love and our devotion, our affection, and our perspective of being connected to him where I'm saying I am willingly choosing to be connected to you. I'm willingly choosing to set my affection upon you and willingly choosing to allow you to empower me to do all the aforementioned things we talked about previously. And so he says, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him, that begot loveth him also, that is begotten of him. In other words, when those that have an active belief that Jesus is the Christ, they are born of God. Once we are born again, and what he's trying to illustrate to us is that there has to be a consistent belief that Jesus is the Christ, that he is the Messiah, that he is the deliverer. Hallelujah. We have to have a consistent perspective. We're talking about kingdom victory as an overcomer. We have to have the consistent perspective that Jesus is the Christ, that he is the one that has that is anointed to bring about deliverance to whatever situation and condition that needs to be delivered uh, mm, hallelujah i have to have that constant faith and assurance that through jesus he's the one that's able to bring deliverance the moment that I begin to wane and begin to doubt that he can bring healing to my mind or that his word is no longer able to deliver me in my situation. Hallelujah. It begins to shift and change uh, uh, the ability and way that I'm able to function with him. And he says, and everyone that loveth him, that begot love him also, that is begotten of him. By this we know the love. By this we know we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments and so love is the supreme ethic there is a connection that must take place he says we know this and we have this love and what's reflective or shows this love that we love him and keep his what commandments is <clears throat> twofold Many people are trying to get away from religion. They're trying to say it's not religion. It's not all about religion. Yes, it's about relationship. But I would submit to you that relationship and religion are married together. Your relationship should dictate your religion for what we talk about religion. We're not talking about the religion of man. We're not talking about, when I, what I mean by that is this. We're not talking about as what Jesus said. He told the Pharisees, and at one point he told them, he said, listen. Listen, I want you all to listen and the things that the Pharisees are saying you need to do. That's religion because it was connected in the Old Testament. He said, but don't do the things and what they, how they're acting, the, the way they're trying to display it. He said, you have made the commandments of man the doctrines of God. So I'm not speaking of something that is man-made and someone's trying to make that a doctrine, saying you, can't, you have to follow this. But I'm speaking of the inerrant word of God. Religion is how I, there are rules and regulations that dictate how I begin to function in my spirituality. Did you hear what I said? Religion is supposed to give the rules and regulations on how I begin to function and live out my spirituality. See, you can be spiritual all you want, but Oh, through the scripture, especially when you're coming to a holy God, uh, there are specific rules. He called, you know what, let me say it this way because, you know, I want you to be with, be with me. He said it like this in the Old Testament. He called them commandments. He called them his tenets. He called them his judgments. He, you follow what I'm saying? He says, my commandments, my judgments, my precepts, those are his laws, his rules, and regulations that show you how you can function and be connected to God. Now, because we are a kingdom now, and we're speaking of kingdom principles, every kingdom, they have rules and regulations that dictate 
how you function in a kingdom. And, and so for the Christian, because we are connected to the kingdom and he's the king of kings and lord of lords, the Bible then is not just rules and regulations, but they are the, it's the constitution that outlines to us how we then function in this spiritual kingdom so that we now can receive kingdom wealth so that we can receive kingdom peace so that we can reflect kingdom culture so that we can receive kingdom benefits oh hallelujah i heard someone say it this way the reason why jesus preached so much about the kingdom versus healing and prosperity because there's certain things that you get automatically when you're connected to a kingdom when you're connected to a specific kingdom you receive as kingdom citizens it's not like a democratic society you receive as kingdom citizens the benefits and blessings that come as a result of being connected to the kingdom and, and so if I'm connected to the kingdom of England and whatever riches that England has, whatever oh prosperity that England has whatever territory they have the king shares it with their citizens. Uh, the Bible says that we're connected to a kingdom that's from heaven uh, he's called the king of kings and the lord of lords and, and so his kingdom is one from heaven and it just so happens that that the king that's all glory over this kingdom is the God of, of all creation. Uh, and so Jesus said, if you could just begin to function in kingdom, uh, stop looking at this as rules and just regulations. But uh, the religious part is uh, these are the laws uh, that dictate how you and I can function in this kingdom so that we can be partakers of this kingdom power. Uh, Jesus said those that are part of this kingdom because in him is life and there is no darkness. Healing is a part of this kingdom. Mm, glory. Peace is a part of this kingdom. Power to subject the powers of darkness is a part of this kingdom. Uh, so he said that you must love me and keep my commandments. Uh, your relationship and love with me uh, should dictate uh, how you begin to function in the kingdom, how you begin to move in the kingdom, uh, how you begin to outline and live uh, this laws. Uh, I'm not just living this thing uh, because you told me so, uh, but as I mature in this love, uh, see this agape love is not something that you may immediately walk into, brothers and sisters. Uh, this is something that uh, you and I, you, you got to cultivate it. It comes through staying with your God. It comes through staying before him. Uh, it's not going to come overnight but the more I stay before him and the more I do like John did and lay my head upon the breast of Jesus the more I intake his word uh, he begins to cultivate this love for me and when you love me you keep my commandments and because uh, I love him it, it begins to transition you begin to see a shift and change uh, in your connection with him you, you begin to say because I love you I prefer you above all because uh, you are my first uh, and my last because uh, I'm so connected to you. I am choosing now, Lord, uh, to live this life uh, that's going to allow me to stay connected to you. Uh, to, oh, glory. That's why the Bible says uh, that the church is a mystery of marriage. Uh, as our bishop talked about, to have uh, and to hold. Uh, it's a choice uh, to love for richer and poorer. Uh, till death do us part through sickness uh, and in health. When we take that vow, uh, why I'm making a mental assertion to choose you above all else. Uh, I'm covenanting with you to choose you above all else. 
times uh, through all of my ignorance, uh, through all of my stupidity, uh, through our ups and our downs, uh, I'm making a commitment to be with you, uh, hallelujah, and you only. Uh, I'm going to live this life. I'm not going to step out on you. I'm not going to, oh glory, lay you down. I'm not going to discard you because of my love uh, and my connection to you. If you love him, uh, for this is the love of God uh, that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. Uh, oh, glory. Give God a hand clap praise uh, in the house. Uh, hallelujah. 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 I must hasten on. We must, must get ready to wrap this up. And so kingdom victory as an overcomer it starts off with the perspective brothers and sisters where the scripture says whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ uh, is born of God and everyone that loveth him that begot loveth him also that is begotten of them by this we know the Bible says that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments and so the same love that God portrays through us we begin to love and are connected to others to those who are his children at one point Jesus said how or the Bible says how do you say that you love God whom you've never seen Glory, how do you say you love God whom you never seen and you can't love your brother and sister who you see every day? Help us, Holy Ghost. And, and so he immediately goes to that point and said, talks about for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So the thing that outlines the love is how we keep his commandments, how we agree and allow the word of God to work through us and for us. Hallelujah. You're praying for me. And the Bible then says that our love then, our love, our love, our connection, our love then is being perfected or matured. My love is being perfected and matured. Your love is being perfected and matured. They're being perfected and matured through these specific ways, through boldness and confidence. Herein is our love made perfect, the Bible says, uh, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. So we then through our boldness and confidence in Christ, he begins to mature us in this love. He begins to uh, mature us to cause us to grow closer to him. We're also mature through honesty. The Bible says, if any man, as we said earlier, say, I love God, but hate his brother, you're a liar. The Bible says uh, that who he that loveth not his brother, who you have not, who you see every day, but you say you love God, who you don't see. He says you're a liar. So through honesty, we are being made perfect or matured through the honest application. What do you mean? Hallelujah. God now is expecting us through his power and through him to begin to live out this love in every aspect of our lives. So we have to abdicate to his will. We have to say yes to his will so that he then causes us to be perfected or matured to when I don't feel like it, when it is not profitable for me that I still can love and walk in this love. It also is perfected through us having joyful obedience. The Bible talks about, again, that Jesus learned obedience through the things that he suffered. And so as we suffer and go through things, it moves us to the place of being connected to him and maturing in love. Now we must hasten on. And so the Bible then indicates, brothers and sisters, that we have the victory. He says in verse number four, for whosoever or whatsoever rather is born of God overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even by our faith. Write this down. There are three major things that you and I overcome as it relates to us living in this existence. The Bible says we have to overcome the world. The Bible indicates that we overcome the flesh and the Bible indicates that we overcome our enemy the spiritual enemy we overcome the world we overcome the flesh and we overcome 
our enemy. There are three things the Bible says that are in the world, and I'm about to wrap this up. There are three things that are in the world, the Bible says. It's the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Uh, and so what do we do when it comes to the world? The way that we fight these particular attacks, it has to be through the word of God. We see that Jesus was in the wilderness and when he was in the wilderness, we have to begin to align ourselves with faith using the word of God as we begin to overcome these things that are in the world. We have to uh, assent and utilize our faith using the word of God as we overcome these three things that are in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. We have to be realized we have been crucified with him. We have to align ourselves with the faith of God, understanding we're crucified with him, and put ourselves under. Number two is the flesh. When your flesh begins to rise up, as the book of Galatians talks about the works of the flesh, the way that we have to fight the flesh, we use the word and we have to make sure we flee the temptations and things that may come upon the flesh. What do you mean that when those thoughts and issues and conditions try to come up to war with your natural man and cause you to function in your natural perspective? We must, uh, hallelujah, through the word of God and through his spirit, uh, we must detach and flee ourselves. The Bible says, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he shall flee from you. When something happens, we have to acknowledge it. Okay, Lord, I see it. And, and I not only see it, but I see that I should not be functioning in it. That's what we talk about when you rebuke something. You're setting it straight. You're, look, you shouldn't be operating this way. So you have to acknowledge it and understand self. See where you have come short. Hallelujah. You hear what I'm saying? And then you confess and repent it. Father, I realize this. And I'm confessing this before you. And I am repenting for this particular thing. I'm not just saying I'm sorry, but I have the heart and mind now to align myself to your word and I'm needing you to help me to move in the different direction. Then you got to put it under the blood of Jesus and his cross. And then you have to get the word and replace the lies that the enemy has told you about what you thought was right according to the flesh. But then get the word and, and replace it with the truth of the word of God. And then number three, the enemy, the spiritual enemies. For the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So when the enemy comes and tries to fight against us, those spiritual enemies, we have to stand in the reality of the victory that Christ has gained over the enemy. It's only through him that we really can fight <clears throat> any spiritual and demonic powers is through him that we have the authority to be able to stand and be strong. And this is where we take on the armor of God. This is when we place on the full armor of God. He says, gird yourself, your waist with the truth. The truth is the word of God. So when I go to encounter the enemy, I must encounter with the perspective and mindset, hallelujah, of the truth of the word of God. When I go to encounter these spiritual enemies, I put on Christ and I put on the breastplate of righteousness. It is the righteousness of Christ Jesus. I, I stand in my right standing before God and I stand in the authority and having the ability to war against these spiritual entities because it's not me, but it's because of the right standing of Jesus Christ. My feet are shed or shod with the gospel of peace. In other words, I put off the flesh and I put on Christ. This allows me to come with the clean garment. I take up the shield of faith. Hallelujah. Being able to have that confidence in his word. And I pick up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I now am at a place where I use the word of God, the rhema of God as the sword. I speak God's word. I can speak his word of deliverance to war against the enemy because now I am clothed with Christ and when the enemy tries to come in I through Christ am able to bind, to loose, to cast down, to destroy and then it says praying always 
prayer is so vital and so important because when we link in prayer, we're speaking God's thoughts after him. When we link in prayer, uh, God commanded us to pray, but pray also is the mechanism by which God said, I will allow you to function in authority and power in this realm and so what we do uh, hallelujah to be kingdom victors uh, to have kingdom victory as uh, an overcomer uh, we have an our kingdom victors uh, and we have victory as an overcomer the bible says uh, that whosoever is born of god overcometh the world uh, and this is the victory that overcometh the world uh, we must realize that in christ uh, i have already overcome the world. I must have that faith and assurance that I have overcome. I have conquered through Christ. I've conquered everything that the enemy can throw at me. Not me, but I've conquered it through Christ because he is seated far above all heavens. Hallelujah. Because he has made an open show of the enemy. Glory through Christ. I have conquered. We have overcome the world. And this is the victory now. This is the means by which we continually overcome even by our faith. Remember, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. From God's perspective, faith is him putting, hallelujah, his word, glory, and putting his creative energy in his word. God takes his creative life places it in his word and he releases it to bring forth spiritual and natural realities it's a spiritual force being connected to him from our perspective it is us agreeing allowing his spirit to move on our heart where we agree with his word where our heart is connected to him in love and service and we will ourselves to allow the word that he's released to, to come forth in our lives. Hallelujah. We are able to overcome those who oppose the truth of God's word. We are able to overcome those things that would oppose God's word because we have to moment by moment, we have to minute by minute, we have to second by second make faith choices. Uh, we have to second by second make a faith choice uh, to say, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. Uh, we have to moment by moment make those faith choices uh, where I'm saying that I'm treating my future as it is my present. Uh, that no matter what it looks like, uh, no matter what it may appear like, uh, I'm bringing the hope uh, into the present. Uh, I'm receiving it uh, in my spirit uh, and I'm going to stand on what God's word says. Uh, kingdom victory as an overcomer uh, means that I have stand on. Uh, I'm standing on the word of God. Uh, and though no matter what it may look like, uh, no matter what it may seem like, uh, I'm standing on what God's word has said. Uh, only thing I'm going to speak uh, is going to be his word. Uh, only thing I'm going to hash about uh, is his word. Uh, I'm going to fill myself uh, with his word. I'm going to speak his word and though the enemy may come in like a flood I'm making a faith choice I'm making a moment by moment choice and I'm standing saying that I have the victory through Christ Jesus it may not feel like it I may be sad and it may seem like all H-E double hockey stick is going on all around me but the Bible says he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He said, because I have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, my fortress, that he has set before me life. He has set before me the path of life. It may not seem like it, but I can take God at his word. 
I can stand and say, devil, oh glory. Yes, you've come in like a flood, but my Lord and Savior has spoiled you. He strips you of all power. He strips you of all your authority. And all I got to do is just stay in the arms of the Lord. All I got to do is just stay right there. Kingdom victory as an overcomer is one as a kingdom citizen. You realize that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Kingdom victory as an overcomer is where one says that this is the conquest. This is my means of victory, even by my faith. Oh yes, I may be getting tired, but it's not by my not by my strength but it's by his spirit kingdom victory as an overcomer means that you can be in the midst of the fire you can be in the midst of the flood and you can stand and still say I still have the victory I still am victorious I still am conquering I still am standing on the word because as God be for me who can be against me if God be for me who can be against me in the name of Jesus Father lose your divine life Father lose your health Father lose your glory Father in the name of Jesus we come against uh, every stronghold. Uh, we come against every high place. Uh, we come against everything that's trying to war with the people of God. Uh, Father, pay attention here. Uh, I need you to pray. Uh, Father, you move as only you can. Uh, oh, glory. When the enemy comes in, uh, it's not time to spectate, uh, but it's time to war. Uh, Warfare is needed. You roar in your prayer. You roar in your praise. You roar in your strength. In the name of Jesus, we pull down every stronghold. Oh, I rebuke the powers of darkness right now. The very thing that's trying to keep the people bound. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Father, cast down uh, the very thing that's trying to keep uh, the minds and hearts of your people uh, from breaking through. Satan, the Lord rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Uh, God is trying to bring forth uh, full deliverance, uh, full safety, uh, full deliverance uh, in your life. Uh, when the enemy comes in like a flood, uh, you must raise the standard of God. Father, do it as only you can in the name of Jesus. Stop holding on to the things that's keeping you bound. God is trying to do something here, but you must break through. We must break through in our praise and in our worship. Let everything that have breath Come on, praise the name of God. Come on, praise his name. Praise his name. Praise his name. Father, in the name of Jesus. The End Time Apostolic Christian Holiness Church would like to thank you for listening to the anointed word of God. For a copy of this message or to receive information about the Apostolic Christian Holiness Ministry, contact us at 614-274-274. 8217 or write to us at 650 South Warren Avenue, Columbus, Ohio 43204 or you can visit us on the at www.n-time.org. We are conveniently located off of I-70 West exit 98A, just five minutes west of downtown. Thank you for listening, and until next time, may God bless you and keep you.